Hello everyone, welcome to the Halal Africa show. Please do me a favor, subscribe, click on the notification bell and share and also don't forget to like the video. And it's yet another very exciting day. Um, what I want to discuss with uh, my subscribers today is two things. Uh, these are the recent happenings in the Gambia and as you guys know I am very passionate about my country the Gambia so today we're going to talk about two things like I said uh, the drug seizure at the Gambia uh, ports and also the diplomatic passport scandal um, I think as a country we need to be very careful with the way our leaders are running our country. I am of the belief that the Gambia is not a pariah state. So therefore the people that we vote into office, we expect them to live up to our expectation. And how can they do that? The only way they can do that is to be accountable to us, we the citizens. They need to work in our interests. They need to serve our interests. They should not be in office just to serve their selfish interests. So we will look at first uh, the drug seizure which took place in the Gambia, I think on the 1st of January 2021, uh, the alleged seizure of the drugs which is 2.9 tons of cocaine which was intercepted in the Gambia by our narcotic agents in collaboration with the Interpol and the drugs are said to have a street value of 88 million US dollars and and I think since this seizure happened in the Gambia what bothered me much is the continuous silence of the government of the Gambia as citizens of the Gambia we don't know what is happening. I think it was only one time we saw on the national news that this cocaine was intercepted at the Banjul port. And since then, the Gambia government did not come out to tell the citizens of the Gambia what is happening. And we all know that in the absence of information, in the absence of communication, rumor will thrive. And when rumor thrives, it becomes your word against mine. And the only entity that can speak on this matter is the Gambian government. They have the spokesperson for the office of the president, which is Ibrahima Sankare. We also have the government spokesperson, the Minister of Information and Technology, which is Ibrahima Silla. But none of these people are coming out to talk to the Gambian people. And what I can read, and most of the Gambians can read from their silence, is that the Gambia government has a hand in this because such amounts of drugs cannot come to the Gambia without the government knowing something about it and I am of the belief that if Interpol did not intervene this story would have gone cold we the Gambians will never know what had happened these drugs originated the cocaine consignment came from South America in Ecuador and it went through Spain and finally to the Gambia and we all know that for the past few years West Africa has been used as a transit route in the transnational drug trade that is happening so they use West African countries to transit this hard drugs to Western Europe and other parts of the world. And the countries that they use are Cape Verde, 
Senegal, Guinea-Bissau, and the Gambia, especially for Guinea-Bissau. We know that since the early 2000s, uh, the South American drug cartels have, have been using Guinea-Bissau as a transit route. And we all know the history of these cartels. They operate with impunity. Wherever they operate, they use violence to achieve their goal. These people don't care about the development of any country. All they care about at the end of the day is the money that they're going to obtain from this business. So therefore, we, the Gambians, said that we have a responsible government. How is it possible that these drugs were transported from Ecuador in South America via Spain to the Gambia without the knowledge of our authorities? We have the SIS, the State Intelligence Services in the Gambia. We have the Narcotic Department also there. What is their role? What is their responsibility? And to be quite honest with you, I think the silence of the government says a lot about what kind of government we have in our country. This is not the first time we are seeing such drug seizure at our port in Banjul. We remember, I think in early 2000, 2000s, a similar thing happened during the reign of President Yahya Jameh. A large quantity of cocaine was intercepted somewhere around Kuloro in Bonto area. But in the end, what happened was that drug disappeared. And now it, was, it is clear during this TRRC proceedings that actually it was the state that took, uh, um, took those drugs to hide it, you know, away from the Gambians. And we have to know that in this day and age, credibility is something which is very important. And if the Gambia should lose its credibility among her peers, it affects us, the citizens. And we don't want our country, the Gambia, to be labeled as a transit country for hard drugs, drugs like cocaine and heroin to Eastern Europe and other parts of the world. So therefore, as a country, we need to tighten our belts. Our operatives, our uh, um, men in uniform should do their job with integrity. So long as you are doing the right thing, work in the interest of the country. But since on the 1st of January, the government has been very quiet about this issue. And the only conclusion that we can draw is to say that the government of the Gambia has a hand in this. Because if they don't have a hand in this, why are they not talking to people? Because as a responsible government, since this drug seizure took place, they should be constantly updating the Gambian people every day. There should be press conferences every day to tell us you know, where they are with the investigations. But no one is saying anything. So it is quite suspicious that the government of the Gambia is not saying much about this. And I think as a country, we should be very concerned because having these hard drugs in our country could endanger the peace and stability in our country. So therefore, it is our responsibility as citizens to make sure that our government tells us what is happening with this drug seizure, and we need to know what they are doing on a daily basis. The other issue also is 
the diplomatic passport scandal. I think this issue started in 2019. And there is a lot of rumor going on about this passport scandal. And for me, what I find very disturbing is that the government of the Gambia is issuing this diplomatic passport to people who are not citizens, citizens of the Gambia. I understand that our president has the right to issue anyone with a diplomatic pass in the Gambia. But these are directed by certain ethics and values, norms which are acceptable everywhere. Because the law empowers you as a president to give the diplomatic pass to anyone doesn't mean that you can give it to any person like that. This is our national document. And it is not just a national document. It is a diplomatic pass. So therefore, we cannot just give those kind of documents to anybody like that. But this goes to show how corrupt the government of the Gambia is because the people who they are giving this diplomatic passport to are not Gambians, but these people are buying this passport because they are paying a lot of money to get this passport. And the people who are receiving this passport are not genuine people. These are not people who are investors. They disguise themselves as investors coming to the Gambia, fooling our people, lying to us. But we know that these people are criminals. What I find very disturbing is that the office of the president is no ordinary office. And people should not have access to the presidency very easily. It is only in the Gambia that is happening. We need to respect that institution. We need to respect that office. We need to respect that seat. But it is only in the Gambia that, you know, a person from nowhere can just walk into the Gambia, pretend to be somebody who he or she is not, and then easily get access to our president. When we, the Gambians who have genuine issues to discuss with our president cannot have access to him or cannot have access to that office. And the reason being is that the people who are close to the president are doing this because they know they are going to gain something financially from the people they are trying to introduce to the president. They are not there. To protect the interests of the Gambians, they are not there to protect the presidency. They don't even do any in-depth investigation or background check to know who exactly these people are. I know from the First Republic to the Second Republic to the Third Republic, we have issues with our passport. Nationals of other countries can easily come to the Gambia, acquire our passport, and travel with it overseas without even becoming a Gambian citizen. All this is possible because our officials are corrupt to the core. Let's be honest here. An investor, if you come to the Gambia, why do you have to go to the office of the president? We have institutions that are responsible for taking care of issues dealing with investors coming to our country. We have GAIPA, Gambia Investment and Export Promotion Agency. This is the agency that has the legal mandate to help potential investors coming to the Gambia, advising them as to what to do, what kind of investment to invest in. The president or the office of the president has nothing to do with this. 
we also have Pura, which is Public Utilities Regulatory Authority. This is the authority that regulates business in the Gambia. We also have the Gambia Chamber of Commerce and Industry. So these three entities put together, these are the entities that are responsible for helping investors who are interested in investing in the Gambia. So therefore, we don't need duplicity of responsibility. The office of the president is a very important office and therefore he has a lot of things to attend to. Therefore, we should keep the presidency out of this. But the reason why we, the, the president is involved in every investor that comes in the Gambia is simply because of corruption. We have seen what happened on the Yaya Jame. Any investor who comes to the Gambia goes to Yaya Jame. And any investor who invests in the Gambia, Yaya Jame must have a, a share in the company. This is undone. This goes to show that we don't have strong institutions in the Gambia that will challenge some of these illegal things happening in the country. And it is very sad to know that we don't have people who can stand up to some of these illegal things happening in our country. The other political parties are not talking much about this. People in the service cannot stand up to the office of the president or other departments if they are doing something which is illegal. How then do we expect the Gambia to move forward? How then do we expect the Gambia to develop if we cannot have people in office who have integrity? We need people who are honest to the Gambian people. Because this is the only way we can bring about change. In 2016, people yearned for change. This is why they voted out the dictatorship that we have in the country. They voted out the corrupt government that we have then. But it goes to show that we only change the person. But the system is still intact. The people who enabled the system in the past are still within the system today. You're doing the same thing. It is business as usual in the Gambia today. Nothing has changed. So therefore, how do we expect genuine investors to come and invest in the Gambia when the name that we are selling out there about our country is not good? Because this drug seizure that we happened in the Gambia, our government is quiet about it. Interpol came. They're doing their investigation. At the end of the day, they cannot corrupt the Interpol. Interpol will report exactly what they think is happening in the Gambia. This is going to affect our Gambian business men and women because it means that if you go overseas, you want to import anything into the Gambia, they are going to you know, scrutinize whatever you're doing with multiple eyes because they already know that in the Gambia it is very easy for somebody to ship cocaine from South America to the Gambia. And once it gets to the Gambia, the Gambia government will not do anything about it. It is high time for us to have serious people in leadership. We have a problem. We have a fundamental problem as Gambians. Why is it that no one is upset about what is happening? By now, we Gambians should take to the street to protest peacefully and make the government know that what is happening is not right. For the interest of few people, you cannot make the entire country suffer, pay for something which we don't even know about. Why are you giving our diplomatic pass to foreigners, people who are not genuine investors, people who are criminals, people who have a criminal past, the people who are mentioned in this, who are Germans or Italians or Belgians, 
Why are we welcoming them to the Gambia? Why are we allowing them to have an interaction with our presidency? Who are they? They are false investors who came to Gambia for the past one year or so. They cannot show us any genuine investment they have done in the Gambia. But all they are perpetuating is criminality. These are fraudsters. They have no genuine intention. So Gambians, it is high time for us to stand up to things that we believe is not in our interest. We live in a democracy, therefore we should be able to hold our government responsible. If they do anything which is stupid, we need to correct them. It is within our right to protest peacefully for things which are happening in the Gambia. We have so many issues going wrong in our country that we need to fix. We should not have time to be dealing with issues such as drugs and diplomatic passport scandal. When we have our hospitals, people are dying in our hospitals because we don't have drugs. We don't have the equipment which are needed. Majority of our people are living in poverty. We cannot feed our country. We, it's a, it, you know, we depend on import. We sustain our government based on gift. Our government, our operation, our daily operation is paid for by foreign governments. A country cannot develop that depends on foreign aid. Foreign aid will never develop our country. So therefore, this current government that we have in the Gambia, we expect them to bring about change, positive change in the lives of Gambians. But it seems like they lack focus, they don't have a roadmap. They don't have a blueprint for us. And we need to be very careful as a country. What kind of people are we voting into power? What kind of government are we putting in place? Because we cannot put bald heads in positions of responsibility who don't even know how to lead. Because as a leader, you have to have vision. You have to have a plan. And you should be able to come out with, you know, ways to execute those, you know, plans, those visions. Because visions alone will not change the country, but they have to be implemented. Gambia is the smallest country on mainland Africa. A population of two million people. If we are genuinely serious, we can develop our country in 10, 20 years. It's possible. But we cannot achieve this if we have a government which is corrupt. If we have a leadership that is not efficient. If we have people who are selfish and self-centered. So therefore, the responsibility and the power lies in our hands as citizens. We voted a government into that office. And we had a social contract. And the social contract is we want to see development. We want to see our lives improving. So if the government should fail in delivering that social contract that we signed with them, then it is our responsibility to take that government out of power through democratic means. We have an election coming this year, December 2021. It is our responsibility to vote a government or a political party in power that we believe will do the right thing for the Gambian people. 
the status quo has to change, it cannot continue. We want to be like other people in other countries. We want to be like the Singapore. We want to be like New Zealand. We want to be like other countries. And it is our right to ask for that from our government. And please, if you have comments about this topic, please let's keep the conversation going. And I think as Gambians or people who care about the Gambia, we should talk about issues that affect us as a, as a country, as a people. And with that, I come to the end of this video. Thank you very much. I'll see you another time. Bye for now.